Hi there everybody, my name is Vax. I'm an application engineer here at UMAX, and today we're gonna to be doing a full tutorial on how to use the Einstar scanner. This will be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up, calibrate, scan, edit data, post-process, and more. So let's get into it. First, let's unpack our scanner, its cables, and the calibration board. Begin by taking the data cable and plugging the round end into the scanner. It should click in. Then plug the power adapter into the socket on the cable. Then plug the power cable into the power outlet. You should see lights on the scanner, indicating that the device is powered. Then plug the USB side of the data cable into your computer. Now, install the latest software from the official website. The link is in the description. When you start the program, check to see if the program recognizes the device as online. In the top leftmost tab, you should see the name of the product. If instead you see device offline, reconnect your scanner and press the circle button right under it. Now let's get to calibration. We recommend calibration every time you move your workstation, whenever the scanner receives a knock or drop, and whenever you notice reduced performance or strange behavior. Calibration is simple. Place the board down flat in the position shown. Hold the scanner at the indicated angle for the current calibration step. Bring the scanner closer or further from the board as needed until all the boxes on screen are lit up. Make sure you maintain the angle of the scanner and keep it aimed at the center while doing this. It might be a little tricky at first, but once you've done it a few times, it's very quick and easy. Once you're done with that, flip the board over and do the white balance calibration. This is a simple one-step calibration where you hold the scanner parallel to the board and raise it to the correct distance. Now we are almost ready to begin our scan. Let's choose our project settings. First, scan mode. Portrait mode is good for scanning human subjects. It can scan just portraits or the entire body. I'll give you three guesses as to what object scanning mode is for. Our object size mode will modify the scanner settings to make it easier to scan objects of their respective size. Personally, I recommend medium to large object mode for most objects as it increases the field of view and makes it easier to maintain tracking and just makes scanning in general a lot easier. Then there's alignment modes. Alignment modes are how our scanner knows where it is relative to our subject, or how it maintains tracking. Feature tracking uses geometric features. This is great for when you don't want to use markers on your subject, but your subject must have rich features for it to work, and it can sometimes have issues with patterned or symmetrical areas which is why I usually recommend hybrid tracking, which lets us use both markers and features for alignment. With this mode, we can simply put markers only where the feature tracking falters. There is also just marker tracking. Texture alignment uses the appearance of the surface to align. It should work well on colorful, non-plane surfaces. Resolution determines the quality of our scan data. It also affects the file size and processing times of our data. Let's get into scanning with object mode. Let's take a look at some of the options on the left. Brightness is important to tune so that our data will be of good quality. Our tracking will be easier to maintain and our texture will look more realistic. We will adjust this when we are scanning using the controls on the scanner itself, though you can also tweak it here. Working distance will control the distance our scanner should be at while scanning. Working distance will control the distance our scanner should be relative to our subject while scanning. Data quality indicator will display a color coordinated overlay on our scanned data, letting us know if we should rescan certain areas to improve the quality. Texture flashing uses an additional light on the scanner. I recommend you keep this on. To begin scanning, aim the scanner at your subject and press the play button. This will put the scanner into preview mode. While in preview mode, Let's adjust our brightness so that there's only a little bit of red on the subject in the camera window. To adjust brightness while scanning, we can double tap the play button, which will make it so the plus and minus buttons of the scanner will adjust the brightness. You can double tap the play button to revert the plus and minus buttons to their previous function, which is zooming in and out. Once everything looks good, we can press the play button again to begin scanning. Remember to move slow around tough angles and new areas. Also, keep an eye on the bars to the left of the screen. This is your distance indicator. We can press the play button once to pause the scan. 
then we can move our object and get another angle. Now we resume and finish up. Let's talk about data editing. When your scan is paused, you can use these selection tools to select parts of your data by holding down shift and dragging over the portion you want to select with your mouse. With that selection, we can delete, invert the selection, or make a connected domain. Connected domain selects all the data that is connected to our selection. We can also make a cutting plane, which will delete any data under the plane and prevent any future data that would be scanned from appearing. We can make a cutting plane by either drawing a line or selecting data. The cutting plane can also be deleted later and adjusted. Now let's generate point clouds, which will refine and filter our scan, and we can get a better view of what the scan might look like when it becomes a mesh. We can also continue to work on it after we've done this. One thing we can do after we've generated point clouds is look at our project groups. Here I've cut our data in half to help demonstrate project groups. Project groups are a way to have multiple separate scans in the same project file. We can even align them together, which is very useful for large objects and techniques such as digital assembly, or objects that can't be scanned in one piece for whatever reason. To make a project group, go to the Project Groups tab. It's only visible when point clouds have been generated. Press this button to make a new project group. Now we have a clean slate to work with, but our other scan is still here. Now let's say we needed to scan this object in two parts. We can scan the other part in this project group. Now that we're done and we've generated point clouds for this project group, we can align both groups together. Press this button. Select the groups here to place them in the windows for alignment. Choose a method. We can align by features, markers, or by selecting common points. Your groups must share common data in order to be aligned together. Selecting of common points is done by holding shift and clicking. When you have finished and your scan data looks good, we can push this button to turn our point cloud data into a mesh 3D model. We have many settings here to play around with. Most are self-explanatory. Mesh optimization will add more resolution in curved areas. Usually I go with recommended settings. Watertight meshing will seal any gaps in the mesh. However, it should only be used for smaller gaps, as larger ones will result in a very messy blob-like structure forming. After that's done, we can revert and remesh until we're happy with the results. Post-processing tools have similar capabilities. With it, we can modify the texture, seal holes, simplify to reduce file size, smooth, and more. Every change you make is reversible, so don't be afraid to experiment. When we're done, we can press the button here to directly send it to a program of our choice, or we can just save it here. There's also some measurement tools available for our mesh, including distance, surface area, and volume. Some of the measurement tools require you to select areas of data or points. Selection is controlled the same way it is in every other part of the program, by holding shift and using your mouse. Let's talk briefly about portrait mode before we end the video. Portrait mode works very similarly to the object mode, but there are a few things you should be aware of. There's an extra option for hair mode, which will make it easier to capture hair. But even with this, you should make sure your subject's hair is kept in voluminous clumps rather than scattered strands. Also, it can sometimes have trouble with black hair, so keep that in mind when adjusting brightness and preparing your subject. Don't go too overboard with the brightness though, even if you can't capture your subject's hair. Otherwise, your texture will be extremely grainy. Einstar is also eye safe, so feel free to capture your subject with their eyes open. When scanning, make sure to start with the face and head and do not return to these areas. Even the best subject will subtly move their facial muscles and eyes. It's best to get it done quick and then do everything else. This is to avoid strange deformations that can occur due to conflicting data. Also, don't try to pause and rescan certain areas. If you need to rescan something, just delete the data and start with a clean slate. That's just how it is most of the time when you're scanning human subjects. Alright, that's about it for Einstar. Thanks for watching.